Old Block's resentment towards Lil Durk was identified after charges against him were dropped. Word on the street is that he snitched on one of Old Block's most beloved, King Von. However, Old Block's hatred for Durk did not start here. Even when his buddy King Von was alive, some Old Block members still did not like Durk. So what caused this hatred? Why does Lil Durk stay away from the infamous Old Block? Lil Durk and King Von relationship. Given Lil Durk is not even from Old Block, why would he feel threatened to visit the area? Why have Old Block members been saying that he is banned from visiting the area? The answer lies in two Two specific incidents. The first one is Dirk's failure to buy Oblock, while the second involved a case in which he and Vaughn were caught up in. However, to understand Dirk's relationship with Oblock, it is important to explore his association with Oblock's most recent poster boy, King Vaughn. There have been many instances of bromance in the hip-hop industry. Eminem and Dre or Drake and Lil Wayne are some of the best examples of rappers becoming close friends. Bromances between rappers often lead to bangers. In other cases, they may lead to trouble. This was the case for Dirk's and King Vaughn's relationship. However, there is a lot of information that has recently been brought to light about their relationship. According to many Oblock members and people who were close to the rappers, there was more than met the eye. A lot was kept hidden. But with Vaughn's death, a lot of information is coming to light. So how did it all start? King Vaughn and Lil Durk were friends even before they started spitting bars. The two rappers grew up around the same area and were part of the Black Disciples gang. However, it is important to note that the two were affiliated with different sects within the gang. You see, the Black Disciples gang is made up of many other different gangs. So although the rappers grew up on the south side of Chicago and were members of the Black Disciples, they were affiliated with different sects within the gang. Lil Durk belonged to OTF 300, while Vaughn identified with Oblock. Growing up, the two friends had a lot in common. One of the most notable things was the absence of their fathers in their lives growing up. Dirk's father, Dante Banks, was put behind bars in 1993 and was set to spend the rest of his life in prison. He served 22 years before he won his appeal. Banks had been caught up in a crack cocaine distribution ring and had up to $8 million in his possession at the time of his arrest. Upon his release in 2019, Dirk took to Twitter to share the good news. On the other on the other hand, Vaughn's relationship with his father, Walter E. Bennett, was inconsistent as he was constantly in and out of jail. In the streets, Walter was known as Silk and was reportedly a legend in his hometown. Unfortunately, Vaughn's father passed away when he was only 11 years old. King Vaughn's uncle alleged that Walter died as a result of a gunshot wound inflicted by a sniper from a rival gang. Despite not being around his son for long, Vaughn claims that he learned a lot from his father. In an Instagram post, Vaughn praised his father for teaching him how to navigate the streets and the importance of loyalty. Men, this dude right here is the definition of hash real. He taught me so much when it came to the street choosing your circle wisely, and most of all hash loyalty, Vaughn wrote. It is also easy to draw a chilling comparison from the two and their relationships with their fathers. Both their dads were convicted criminals. They lived the street life. Judging from how Vaughn and Dirk's lives turned out, it seems like their father's behaviors and lifestyles rubbed off on them. While the two went on to become successful rap stars, it is no secret that their lives behind the scenes were crime-ridden. Lil Dirk started rapping around 2011 and was lucky enough to find a breakthrough. Around this time, his childhood friend, King Vaughn was behind bars. When Vaughn got out, he found that Dirk and other childhood friends, such as Chief Keef and G Herbo, had started rapping and were making it big in the rap scene. Among his friends, Lil Dirk was the one who introduced King Vaughn to rapping. For Dirk, he wanted to keep his friend away from trouble. Dirk signed King Vaughn to his Only the Family label. Not long after signing to OTF, Vaughn released his breakout single Crazy Story, thrusting him into the limelight. The following year, Dirk would come through for his friend again and be featured in Vaughn's Crazy Story 2.0. Dirk was already a star and his name helped push the record up the charts. The track peaked at number four on the bubbling under Hot 100 chart. The duo's childhood friendship seemed to be rubbing off on their music as they increased the number of tracks they did together. A month after the success of Crazy Story 2.0, the two produced another track together titled Like That. Vaughn was growing in the rap scene and he owed it all to one man his childhood friend Lil Durk. The two rappers were fast becoming rich and famous, with fans all over the country. In their fans' eyes, the two friends were innocent rap stars who made a living from rap music. What they did not know is that the two were allegedly deeply entrenched in gang life. It seems that they had not left their gangster lifestyle in Chicago. One would assume that since the two were away from Chicago and their gang connections, they would leave their criminal past and focus solely on music. After all, rap was earning the Chicago-born rappers both money and fame. There was really no need to continue being involved in gang activities. However, Vaughn and Dirk had other ideas. 
If they saw ops, they would deal with them. The two have allegedly been involved in multiple crimes. Surprisingly, the two were also arrested for robbery and attempted murder. One would easily ask themselves why two successful rappers would be robbing people at night in the streets. Simple answer. Their lives were deeply intertwined with the gang life. The two saw an op and he had to be dealt with. This case got Dirk and Vaughn arrested and would eventually widen the rift between O-Block and Dirk. So before we get into how the case ruined the Dirk, O-Block relationship, it is important to explore the first incident that started all this. Failure to buy O-Block. On April 30th, 2021, O-Block was listed on sale. That same day, Lil Dirk took to Twitter to announce that he would purchase the property. This was huge news for everyone living in that area. However, there were rumors that Dirk was just trolling. I mean, sure, he was making bank in his music career, but would he really buy the housing project in O-Block? At the time, the housing project was valued at around $80 million. Did Dirk really have that kind of money? And if so, was he really going to buy O-Block? To understand the significance of the area, let us start with the origins of the infamous O-Block. The housing projects in the south side of Chicago that have infamously become known to rap fans countrywide as O-Block is officially referred to as Parkway Gardens Homes. Parkway Gardens is a low-income community that offers affordable two- and three-bedroom apartments for rent in Chicago. The privately owned low-income apartment complex is a 694-unit complex that spans over 13 acres and is located on the border of Woodlawn and Washington Park. The complex was built from 1950 to 1955 on Martin Luther King Drive on the south side of Chicago and was the first to be cooperatively owned by Chicago's African-American residents who experienced a housing shortage during the Second Great Migration due to segregation. The Second Great Migration was the migration of more than 5 million African-Americans from the south to the northeast, midwest, and west. Parkway Gardens shifted from cooperative ownership to the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development (CHUD) management in the 1970s and to private ownership in the 1980s. Following the change in ownership, the property deteriorated because of a lack of investment in modernization and maintenance. The housing complex is widely known due to the gang violence in the area. However, you would be surprised to find out that it has been the residence of prominent people such as Michelle Obama. Unfortunately, during the 2000s and 2010s, the area became crime-ridden, especially with the rise of gang-related violence. It became the stronghold for one of Chicago's largest gangs, the Black Disciples. Violent conflicts between the BDs and their largest op, the Gangsta Disciples, another large gang in the area, turned the area into one of the most violent areas in Chicago. So how did the name O-Block come to be? The area adopted its popular name after the murder of O.D. Perry. O.D. Perry was a member of the BDs and the area was named to honor the fallen soldier. Reports from the area suggested that O.D. Perry's murder was in retaliation to the murder of 15-year-old Shondale Gregory, alias Tuka, who was shot and killed while waiting at a Chicago bus stop the same year. The death of a member of each gang sparked off a series of shootings that have left many dead and continues to wreak havoc in the community to this day. As is with gang violence, each side always wants to have the last laugh leading to an unending cycle of violence. The same year that the back and forth between the BDs and GDs started, a real estate development company based in Chicago made the brave move to purchase the property. By the time they were buying the property, gang violence had not escalated to the massive scale it is today. There is no way the firm would have known what they were getting themselves into. Soon, after purchasing the property for a whopping $40 million, the violence from the war between the gangs started increasing. Apart from the death of young people in the area, the gang violence attracted national attention. Coupled with the rise of drill music in Chicago, every shooting was broadcast on the news and in rap lyrics. Although any publicity is good publicity, this was not the case for the real estate firm that had purchased the property. The negative publicity, plus the damage that the violence was bringing, was bad for business. The company's bottom line suffered a great deal. It is worth mentioning that the O-Block was a low-income housing project. This means that the firm received money from the federal government in the form of incentives such as housing credits and tax breaks. Despite this, the company was still responsible for expenses related to maintaining the property. Therefore, it was forced to pay out of pocket for repairs and renovations in the housing project. This is where the problem lies. With constant violent activity in the area, the buildings were in need of constant renovations and repairs. From replacing elevators to repairing broken windows after shootings or robberies, the company was caught in a cycle of making losses and at best, breaking even. Overall, running the place was not good for business. For example, in 2014, the firm pumped around $9.9 .9 million into the housing complex in the form of renovations. Shockingly, this was not enough. Having finally given up hope of trying to recoup their investment, the firm finally decided to put it on sale. This news meant one thing. 
it was not feasible to try to run the property as a low-income housing project. If it were to be sold, the buyer would not risk running it as its previous owner. One of the ways to turn a profit would be to tear everything down and build expensive condos or apartments. And as we will see, that is exactly what happened. If this were to happen, most of the residents would have to find other places to live, mostly because of the high rent that would be charged. Rumors started spreading immediately that rappers such as Chief Keef and Lil Durk would buy the property. Lil Durk further fueled the rumor after he tweeted, I'll buy it. Don't matter how much it is. This sent O Block residents into a frenzy. With one of their own buying the property, they did not have to be evicted. However, the question that was on everyone's mind was whether Lil Durk was trolling or he had actual intentions to buy the property. Was he just trolling? Did he even have that kind of money? If Durk was trolling, it would have been taken the wrong way by O Block residents, and there was only one way to prove that he was not trolling them buy the property. Sure, Durk was a successful rapper at this time, but few believed that he had $50 million just laying around. On top of that, the property was not really making money. If Dirk bought the property and continued running it as it was, he would be in for serious losses. This means that even if the rapper bought the property and was hell-bent on making a profit, some uncomfortable and hard decisions would have to be made. There is no way that he would have bought it to deliberately make losses. Even if he bought the property, it is important to remember that a firm that specializes in real estate had failed to make the property profitable. Would Dirk succeed where they had failed? Would he find a way to balance his music career and manage the property? Although one would understand Dirk's intentions, the numbers were just not adding up. So, Dirk had put himself in a tough position, buy the property and save it from demolition or risk losing millions of dollars. That was a position no one would want to be in, especially when family and friends were involved. Even though they had their hopes up, Old Block residents had their hearts broken when it was announced that the property had been sold and was off the market. The most devastating news was the report that came with the information. Say Cheese reported that Old Block Parkway Gardens will be disbanded and relocated. Old Block has been sold and best believe it's going to be developed beautifully and completely out of the price range of most current Woodlawn residents. This is about to get interesting and eerily familiar. That's been the move literally since they started tearing down the project. The residents felt played by Lil Durk. It seemed as though he had been trolling them all along. To make it worse, he never addressed the incident. He did not clarify whether he actually wanted to buy the property, which led everyone to conclude that he was trolling them. This was the origin of Oblock's hatred for Lil Durk. At the time, few people spoke up. After all, he had made one of their own, King Vaughn, a rap star, and put the hood on the rap scene map. As far as they were concerned, Dirk had done a lot of good for them. However, all this would come crashing down after Vaughn's death. So what exactly happened after Vaughn's death that triggered Oblock into banning Dirk from visiting? The answer lies in a criminal case that involved both Vaughn and Dirk. Varsity shooting, court case, and snitching allegations. I just talked to an overnight commander who says the only information they can, they can confirm for us is that a man has been shot and he's been rushed to the hospital. On February 5th, 2019, at around 5.45 a.m. shots rang out in the parking lot of The Varsity, a popular restaurant located in Midtown Atlanta. There was one casualty. A 23-year-old man, Alexander Weatherspoon, had sustained a fatal gunshot wound. Weatherspoon stumbled across the road before collapsing in front of the One Cigar Lounge. Turns out it was Weatherspoon's lucky day as customers in the One Cigar Lounge were quick to call 911, and he was taken to the hospital where his wound was treated, and he came out alive from the incident. He was also lucky as witnesses gave the cops crucial information that would lead to the arrest of his assailants. Witnesses told the authorities authorities that an SUV with 300 plastered on the side was seen speeding away from the scene after the shots were fired. Most shooting incidents often go cold as the authorities don't have much to go by. However, on this occasion, the cops had some good leads and after three months of detective work, they finally had a breakthrough. On May 4th, 2019, the first suspect in connection with Weatherspoon's fatal shooting was arrested, King Von. It did not take long for the next suspect in the case to find themselves in handcuffs. Only nine days after Vaughn was arrested, Bezu, a gang member affiliated with Trigger Happy Family, THF, found himself in a similar situation. Finally, the Atlanta police issued an arrest warrant on May 29, 2019, for the final suspect in the shooting incident, Lil Durk. The Chicago rapper was hit with five felony charges. These included criminal attempt to commit murder, aggravated assault, unlawful association with criminal street gang to conduct or participate in crime, possession of a firearm during commission of a felony, and possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. Of the three, Dirk had the most to lose. He was already a big and influential rapper, so he had cause to worry. In particular, he should have been worried about the attempted murder charge. This was a pretty serious charge since it carried around 10 to 20 years in jail. Dirk's actions after the arrest warrant were dramatic, to say the least. They were like a script straight from Hollywood. At the time, the rapper was on tour, so he immediately canceled his shows and flew straight to Atlanta. That night, he dropped a track titled 
turn myself in. His antics did not stop there. The following day, the rapper was quick to hold a TV interview to claim his innocence. He granted WSB TV an interview at his lawyer's office. In the interview, Dirk revealed that he was about to surrender to the authorities the same day. According to him, he had nothing to hide, nor had nothing to run from. You're about to surrender as we speak. Yeah. How come? Because I have nothing to add. Like, I have nothing to run from. Lil Dirk also maintained his innocence and denied committing any of the five charges leveled against him. Did you do it? Did you shoot this man? Did you commit the other crimes of which you're accused? Um, no. After the interview, the rapper proceeded to surrender himself to authorities at the Fulton County Jail where he was booked. When Dirk and Von finally appeared before a judge, two interesting pieces of evidence against Dirk were revealed. It is important to note that a lot of the evidence was against Dirk. Among those arrested, he was the biggest and most influential. Therefore, taking him down would prove a significant blow to crime related to hip-hop, especially in the state of Georgia. First, Jeffrey Churchill, a detective from the Atlanta PD, took to the stand where he revealed that he had spoken with a witness who was with the two rappers the night of the shooting. According to the female witness, a fight broke out in a car that was in front of them. The witness then said that she saw Dirk pull out a firearm. At this point, she was forced to run for her life. As she ran around the building, she heard shots fired. She later saw the victim in a pool of blood. This means that she did not see who fired the shots. The detective also revealed that they had obtained surveillance footage showing Dirk's hand sticking out of the SUV and firing his weapon at Weatherspoon. You see Mr. Banks, arm out the window firing several shots at the victim. That was not the end of it. Prosecutors wanted the case treated as gang-related and had a Chicago police captain confirm that Vaughn and Dirk were members of the BD gang. It is widely believed that Weatherspoon was a member of the Vice Lords. The Vice Lords and BDs do not see eye to eye. According to reports, the two groups have been at war in Chicago. It seemed that they had brought their beef to Atlanta. When Vaughn and Dirk saw him, they recognized him as an op and opened fire. Remember, treating the case as gang activity would have carried even more consequences for the Chicago rapper. A judge would later find probable cause in the charges brought up against the rappers, meaning that the case would move to trial. Lil Durk seemed deep in trouble with this case. It was unlike any other case he had dealt with before. With witnesses and surveillance footage against him available, things were not looking up for the rapper. In late October 2022, against everyone's expectations, all charges against Dirk were dropped. According to multiple sources, including Dirk's lawyers, the case was dropped due to insufficient evidence. Dirk's lawyers pointed out that their position was always that Dirk was present at the crime scene, although he was never involved in the shooting. Although Bezu's charges were also later dropped, there were many suspicious facts that pointed to Dirk having told on Vaughn. Other pieces of information also showed that Dirk may have played Vaughn and was setting him up to take the charges. Many people were confused by the sudden turn of events because of the stack of evidence against the Chicago rapper. Also, the DA, Fonnie Willis, was known to be ruthless in such cases. Shocking court documents may reveal whether Dirk ratted out his friend. In a statement released by Mrs. Willis, she said, if co-defendant Davon Bennett, AKA King Vaughn, had not died in 2020, he would have been indicted for this incident. This statement sent the industry crazy. So according to the DA, if Vaughn was alive, even if all the evidence to this point revolved around Dirk, would still have been charged and Dirk would have gone scot-free, that did not make sense. Many argued that even though Dirk may not have shot Weatherspoon, he should have been charged with being party to the crime under Georgia's law. The state's law can have someone charged if they intentionally aid or abet in the commission of the crime. The theory was that Dirk, had told on Vaughn and passed all the blame on him. Since Vaughn could not defend himself, Dirk was allowed to walk. However, there was a general feeling that Vaughn was set up long before he died. One of the incidents that proved this was when one of Lil Dirk's lawyers, Nicole Mormon, while posing as airport security, was rumored to have searched Vaughn at an airport, an incident that Vaughn filmed. It turns out that Nicole worked with the state for nearly five years as a felony probation officer and specialized task force agent, meaning she could go undercover. The plan seemed to be to get Vaughn in serious trouble and portray him as the dangerous one between him and Dirk. That way Dirk would walk and Vaughn would end up in prison. Apart from that, Dirk had hired good lawyers for himself while Vaughn was being represented by public defenders. On top of all this, Dirk's home was invaded in July 2021, a case that many have claimed was staged to make it appear as if Dirk's life was in danger from gangs. But according to some in the industry, Dirk was being set up by the authorities for a bigger bust. It seemed odd for Mrs. Phyllis to let the case end, despite the evidence against Dirk. One of the theories was that Dirk had been set free because the authorities were working on an even bigger case to bring him and many other gang members down. Although we may never know the truth, it is easy to conclude that O-Block members had made up their mind about the whole situation and they were no longer messing with Dirk. 
similar snitching incidents, and O Block members' reactions. Dirk and Lil Baby, they unfollowed uh, Gunner. Uh, Lil Dirk told on King Von. That's how, he, that's how he beat his charge. With Lil Dirk's snitching allegations in the air, there was a division in the industry and among hip-hop fans. Although the general feeling, as well as the evidence pointed towards Lil Dirk having snitched on Vaughn, was it suddenly okay to tell on the dead? This question may have not been discussed that much in the past. However, with several rappers coming out to confirm that at one time in their careers, they were forced to snitch on the dead to get off the hook, it was about time the issue was addressed. Basically, there are two sides. On one hand, there are those who believe that Dirk did the right thing. Being a young man with a bright future in rap. Many people saw that there was no honor in going to prison and ruining his life, yet there was a way to avoid jail time. It was only logical that he put all the blame on the dead man and walked free. After all, Vaughn was dead. What more could the system do? Many even commented saying that if their friends did not do what Dirk did, they would turn in their graves. One YouTube comment read out, telling on the dead is what you're supposed to do. If I were dead and gone, I would be so mad if my homie did 30 and I'm already gone. That's crazy to me. Another user shared the same sentiment saying, of course he snitched. It's a no brainer. Don't let these rappers or street fool you. If your accomplice dies, why wouldn't you put the blame on them if it means you walk away scot-free? I want my homie to do that if it meant he walked. Y'all crazy. It seems like Dirk's decision was a no-brainer for some people. However, for hardcore rap fans, snitching was snitching, and it should never be tolerated. The rules were set and there was no compromise. A popular argument that was made against Dirk's actions was that Vaughn had young people looking up to him. By tarnishing his name with the crime, he was ruining his legacy and how future generations would view him. Apart from that, many others argued that if Dirk was comfortable snitching on Vaughn while he was gone, there is a chance that he would have done it when he was alive. However, it is important to note that Dirk is not the only one who has been caught up in such a situation. Rapper T.I. and Birdman's brother, Gangsta Williams, have found themselves in similar situations. In January 2022, famous rapper Birdman was re united with his brother, Gangsta Williams. Williams pleaded guilty to engaging in a continuing criminal enterprise and solicitation for murder. He was caught plotting to kill a group of New York drug dealers in New Orleans to get paid for heroin that was mailed to his associate. The feds intercepted the package and wiretapped Williams as he hatched a murder plan. He received life plus 20 years. His release came as a result of his cooperation with the government following his arrest. According to court records, he gave substantial assistance that helped the feds secure guilty pleas from co-defendants. Upon his release, he uploaded a video saying that he was too smart and shrewd to stay and die in jail. Apparently, Williams snitched on the dead. He helped the cops solve over 40 homicides. There was immediate backlash as rapper Boozy Badass took to Instagram to share his disapproval of Williams' actions and called him the world's biggest snitch. So he told on 40 dead people. Hell nah, he told on the whole New Orleans. WTF, he looked like Hashmaster Splinter on this pick LOL. Sammy the Bull has been outdone by an N from Louisiana. This ain't black history, this rat history. WTF, everybody should run when you see this man, world's biggest snitch. However, people in his comment section disagreed with Bossy. One comment read, y'all need to stop it. Telling on 40 dead is not snitching if that's what he did. Now putting 40 in jail is snitching. Rapper T.I. was also in the spotlight for admitting to having snitched on his dead cousin. The rapper explained how it happened on his podcast expeditiously. According to Tip, he and his cousin got caught boosting outside Lenox Mall in Atlanta and were apprehended with a gun in the car, which they were both charged for. He then explained that his lawyer explained to him that he could help clear him of all the charges if they pinned the gun on T.I.'s dead cousin. He also revealed that he had talked with his cousin before he passed away, and he was okay with T.I. putting the blame on him to go free. We caught those gun cases, Toot died, T.I. explained. My lawyer said, well, you know, I could make everything go away if it was Toots, it was Tremel's. After he had passed, I had a talk with him. Toot said, I'll take all the charges you got. If you can walk away free and put it on me, goddamn right, because I'll be damned if they gonna come and extradite me from here. Boozy Badass seems to have a big problem with snitching as he announced he was pulling the plug on a joint project he and T.I. were planning to release after finding out about the snitching allegations. So how exactly did O-Block members react to all the evidence that their poster boy was possibly set up and sold out by Lil Durk, even though he was dead? It is safe to say that O-Block members have been vocal in denouncing Durk after Vaughn's death. They have also been exposing some of Durk's questionable behaviors. Jay Hood, who has spent his entire life in O-Block, has done several interviews where questions about Dirk have come up. Well, one can only imagine all the things he had to say about him. In an interview with Cam Capone News, the O Block member was asked how many times he saw Dirk in O Block. According to J Block, he has only ever seen Dirk twice in O Block. Did you ever see little Dirk and me little Dirk in O Block? I, I, I met him when I, I met the, I seen him on a block. I say, and I've been on a block my whole life. For real, for real. I met, I, little Dirk came over um, on a block like twice. 
This was surprising given that Dirk seemed to fool everyone that he was around O Block a lot. Apart from that, he was vocal on the fact that he believed that Dirk actually told on Vaughn. According to him, if Dirk was present when Vaughn committed the crime yet he did not report it, Dirk would also face the same consequences even if he did not commit the crime. Therefore, for him to have all his charges dropped, he must have given the authorities some information. If I'm with you, we do something, you don't report it, but you know I did it and you don't report it. We go on about our life. You are as more, you as liable as to the case as I am. What I'm finna go down for, you finna go down for, unless when you get in this behind these doors, you tell me something that I don't know. And then probably a little bit more. Other King Von affiliates posted videos telling Dirk that he was banned from O Block. Yeah, Dirk, he can't come back, man. He, he banned, bro. He can't come back to O Block. Dirk has also been threatened on video. If he goes back to O Block, he will most definitely get robbed, if not worse. The sentiment among members of O Block was that Dirk really did set Vaughn up. According to them, Dirk was scared that Vaughn would surpass him. They felt that Vaughn's career was skyrocketing and would soon be better than Dirk's. From all the information in the case coupled with Dirk's failure to buy O Block, there is no doubt that he was unpopular in the area. Apart from that, O Block members were boldly calling him out in public, and no one came to his defense. This showed that no one from O Block really had his back. That, ladies and gentlemen, is why Lil Dirk stays away from O Block. If you enjoyed this video, click on the boxes playing on your screen to watch similar content.